Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topic is the obsolescence of major war. And the next few slides are going to look identical to what we did last time. So the big question here is why was the Cold War never a hot war? And the bigger question is why haven't major powers fought a war against each other since 1945? Now remember, in the last lecture, we used mutually assured destruction to propose one solution. And what mutually assured destruction was saying is that, look, nuclear weapons are very destructive, and so major powers have these nuclear weapons, they have nuclear arsenals, and as long as those three conditions hold, then they're never, never going to want to fight a war against each other because they know that the consequences of a war are just complete destruction, and so there's no reason for them to fight a war when the costs of war are so great. But now we have an alternative hypothesis, and it's important to see that there's a big distinction here between what mutually assured destruction is going to say and what this is going to say. Now, that's not going to be very obvious at first, so let's look at the alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is just that wars between major powers are obsolete. So two powers, two major powers cannot fight wars against one another because the costs will outweigh whatever possible benefit there is. Now, notice I've highlighted here that major powers is the key thing. We're only talking about wars between major powers here. And as I said, this might not be clear about what's going on here in relation to nuclear weapons, because you might be thinking to yourself, hey, wait a minute, nuclear weapons, that all was covered in mutually assured destruction. This is all saying something that mutually assured destruction said before. What's new here? Well, Nuclear weapons does not change this in this framework. So the idea that war is obsolete or that major war is obsolete comes from John Mueller in a book called Retreat from Doomsday. And he gives a really insightful quote that I have up here that explains why these nuclear weapons may not in fact be very important to this peaceful uh, equation that we've had since 1945 between major powers. And so Mueller says that a jump from a 50th floor window is probably quite a bit more horrible to think about than a jump from a 5th floor window, but anyone who finds that jumping from a 50th floor window would be really bad would also find that jumping from a 5th floor window would also be really bad. And so it doesn't matter whether it's the 5th floor or the 50th floor, that guy who is slightly enjoying life, minimally enjoying life, would not be jumping from either window. And so the analogy is that it doesn't matter whether the United States and the Soviet Union had nuclear weapons during World War, or rather during the Cold War. That extra destruction of nuclear weapons wouldn't overturn or wouldn't matter much in comparison to all of the destruction that you could have even without the nuclear weapons. So let's think about wars that are very deadly. In fact, the most deadly wars. The list is right here. So we have World War II, World War I, Iran, Iraq, and Vietnam. Now, none of these wars involved nuclear weapons, right? Except for World War II at the very end. And that's going to account for a very small percentage of the 16.6 .6 million dead. What Mueller says in his book is that basically, look, World War I and World War II demonstrated to the world that war between two major industrialized powers that can really change their economies to gear toward killing one another, there's just so much death and destruction from that that there's no more point in fighting a war. And keep in mind, again, World War One, World War Two, that's from the 1940s and the 1910s. So this is back in a day where we would think that the technology of warfare, forgetting about nuclear weapons for the moment, the just general technology of warfare back then pales in the comparison to what an industrialized power can do today. So you can imagine what World War II would have looked like, forget about nuclear weapons, if it had been fought today with modern technology. It would be significantly more deadly than what you see there. And that's why I've included uh, point three and point four there with Iran, Iraq, and Vietnam. There weren't major power wars there. Those aren't major power wars. Iran, Iraq, neither one of those was a major power during the 80s. And the United States was involved in the Vietnam War. But of course, Vietnam was not a major power. And yet, despite not having two major powers, two fully industrialized, really strong countries fighting each other, you still had 1.3 million dead in Iran, Iraq, and 1 million dead in Vietnam. So the argument is that forgetting about nuclear weapons, this stuff is just so deadly that World War I and World War II has taught major powers that they just can't fight one another, and they need to figure out some sort of bargain resolution. And so putting this into the framework of bargaining, what Mueller says essentially is that, look, here's what the bargaining range looked like before the modern era. And here's what it looks like now, or at least during the Cold War, because I have the United States and the Soviet Union in the background there. So forgetting about nuclear weapons, no nuclear weapons in this world. What we've seen is that because the technology of warfare, of industrialized warfare is just so ridiculously costly, 
there's a huge bargaining range here. And yeah, having nuclear weapons does make that bargaining range a little bit bigger, right? So I did slightly increase this. You can see it's slightly wavering there, right? So nuclear weapons is increasing the bargaining range, but it does it at such a minimal rate, a minimal marginal rate compared to what the rest of industrialized warfare can do that really these nuclear weapons aren't having that much of an effect on the peace process. So what does this mean? What's the policy prescription? Well, Suppose that mutually assured destruction is not really necessary to maintain peace. Suppose that we take Mueller's uh, premise and conclusion for granted. Let's just suppose that that's all true, that we don't need these nuclear weapons to have peace. War is just so costly between major powers that major powers would be bargaining out anyway. Then what? Well, the big question becomes, should we have nukes? And why? Is this a question? Well, there are some risks and consequences to having nuclear weapons. There's accidents po that are possible, and nuclear weapons are, in fact, extremely costly. And so what we're going to be talking about in the next video is that, you know, suppose that the obsolescence of war is true, then perhaps these accidents and these costs might give us reason to be pessimistic about nuclear weapons. So that wraps up this lecture on the obsolescence of war, and in the next time, we will be talking about nuclear pessimism. Hope you enjoy this, and I'll see you next time. Take care.